to part one in my Rhythm Changes lesson series. Rhythm Changes is a standard jazz progression that pretty much every jazz musician is expected to be able to play over. If you go to a jam session or you have a gig, there's a very high likelihood that someone's going to call a Rhythm Changes tune and you're going to have to improvise over it. For me, I kind of lived in fear of rhythm changes for a good few years. I would show up to things and, you know, crossing my fingers that nobody would call a rhythm changes tune on me um, because I didn't really know how to play it. The chords would go by too fast and you know, I would get lost and wouldn't really know what to do and ended up kind of faking it. However, um, in the past few years, I've actually started really enjoying it um, because I've figured out how to play over it. Um, there's some key things that I've worked on that really got me going over this form. Um, so in this series, I'm just going to break down the form bit by bit. Um, just like in my blues series, I did some transcriptions and showed you guys what I learned from them. I'm going to be doing the same thing in these lessons. So to start off, I'm going to do this lesson on something that I practiced a lot over the bridge. So the bridge of rhythm changes is consisting of four chords. D, G, C, and F, all dominant chords. However, I don't actually practice that. I never, ever, ever practice just the bridge of rhythm changes. What I practice to get better at the bridge is this right here. So this is the classic dominant cycle. Every dominant chord resolves down a fifth to the next dominant chord, and it just keeps going and going until you get back to your original key. It goes all the way through the circle of fifths, or fourths, I guess you could say. And the reason I practice this instead of just the four chords in the bridge of rhythm changes is because this is such a common chord progression in jazz that I think it's well worth anyone's while to just go ahead and practice it all the way through so that no matter what tune you see it in and no matter what chord it starts on, you'll be ready for it. And also, um, pretty much just practicing dominant chords on their own, all the time you see dominant chords in you know, different keys, and after practicing this for many, many, many hours, uh, pretty much any dominant chord I see, no matter where my hand is on the neck, my f fingers just effortlessly fall into place. Um, so that is why I practice this instead of just the bridge of rhythm changes. So now that I've shown you that, um, let's get into what I actually practice. 
So like a lot of guitar players, when I first started playing that chord progression, I did it like this. Just moving it down the neck so that I keep all of the chords in root position. That is convenient for guitar because you only need to know a couple shapes and they're easy shapes. The problem with it is that when you try to play lines, you're having to chase your chord shapes or your, your scale shapes down the neck and you just, you know, it, it really takes away your freedom to play what you want and where you want on the neck when you're just chasing your scales the only to the only place you know them. So what I did to get over that is I learned all of these chords in the same place on the neck using some inversions and just, you know, knowing all of my shapes up and down the neck for each chord. Um, so this took a lot of time and, you know, I just learned it. Uh, for I learned it here, I learned it here, I learned it here. Um, and then, you know, you're back up to the 12th fret and it repeats. Uh, so I'm just going to show you guys that for like around the 5th fret here. Uh, I'm playing like nine, some nine chords or whatever. I feel like, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be like some perfect voicings, um, just so that you're pulling up the shape in your mind and you see the scale on the fretboard as you play the chord. Uh, so here we go. D, G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E. practice that until I could do it a bit faster. Um, which took a lot of time, you know, you you got to go through it and you're going to forget where you are, forget which, which one you're on and just work on like, okay, you know, I'm just working on D flat to G flat today. And then the next day you're working on G flat to B and then you're, you know, putting them all together the next day. Um, so it, it really does take some time. It didn't happen all at once. Um, but then to get started with lines, what I practiced was playing the arpeggio of each dominant chord in that position. So I had to learn the inversions of all my arpeggios, which took a lot of time still. Um, so I learned them all and I got them all in the right order. Um, just, you know, practicing them bit by bit, just like I did with the chords. Um, and I'll play through those real quick. D, G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, and then back to D. And you can practice it over a backing track if you want. You can make it more fun. You can make your own backing track. Um, you know, I don't think there are any Abersols with just a dominant cycle. Even though I wish there was, that'd be cool. Um, and I practiced the crap out of that until I never had to worry about well, like what chord was next. I just knew it immediately without having to think. Um, so I'll do that a little bit faster. <laughs> So I kind of uh, messed up a little bit, or I hesitated a little bit in the middle of that. So um, had I been practicing, um, I would be focusing on that area right now. Uh, maybe I will later when I'm practicing. Um, so right now, I'm just going to show you guys. I made a backing track for this. I have, um, I made it just typing it into iRealBe. I highly recommend making some practice tracks like this. Um, I, I have some other ones that I'll share in later lessons, what they are. Um, but my next step is going to be improvising with those arpeggios as opposed to just playing them straight through. Um, just sort of, you know, breaking them up and trying to make melodies out of them so that it's not as much of an exercise as it is a very controlled um way of improvising over a cycle. Um, 
so anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to end this video just playing that, um, improvising with these arpeggios all right around the fifth fret over all 12 keys. Uh, so here we go. <laughs>